They call it the ASUS Republic of Gamer Flow X16. As I mentioned in my unboxing, I think this is the best laptop ASUS has been able to produce in their gaming laptop because they've taken hints from all the other laptops in the past and brought together the X16. When you look at the 16 inch two in one screen, this is a mini OLED display, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It's color accurate, it's bright, and being a touch panel display, this allows digital artists, graphic designers, and photographers to be able to touch up their photos on a color accurate display on the go. This is a nice bright 16 inch panel, but because of that, it gets a little less battery life than say the G14, which is incredible battery life for being an on the go gaming laptop. But as you can see with the results coming up on the screen, they did a very good job choosing the Ryzen 9 6900HS for this system because it's their most power efficient CPU that still has great performance. And I think they did a great job choosing it for the X16. Now also you have the large track pad that sits on top of the keyboard deck. This is a glass trackpad. It's touch sensitive. It's got a great click responsiveness. And I think it was a great move choosing this trackpad. Now looking at the keyboard deck, they took the X13 keyboard, placed it on to the X16. It's got a little bit more room around it. I think it was a great choice. It's very tactile, has a medium key press. And these two working together are a very nice combination. Here's a quick audio sample so you can hear what it sounds like to use the keyboard and the trackpad. One thing I love about the keyboard and trackpad is this kind of two-tone design. Basically, they have a nice matte finish here for the upper keyboard deck, and then the lower keyboard deck has these neat little design lines just to kind of separate it off from the top area. And it's just a nice design nod. Now, I will say these speakers on the top of the keyboard deck really set apart this design as a very good audio experience. Now there's some, some other laptops in the past that haven't had these and the audio experience is just pretty poor. And so I love that they included that in the X16. Here's a quick audio sample so you can hear what it sounds like. Top all that off with a good webcam, you can see why this laptop really does have a lot going for it. Here's a quick audio sample and video of the webcam in use. This is the webcam for the Asus Republic of Gamer X16 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. If you want to catch exclusive content not found on YouTube, we have just launched a Patreon where you can get deeper access into the community. You can get deeper access to connect with me, ask me questions about the laptop you're considering, or maybe even want some feedback about what work you're doing as a creative professional. I'd love to chat with you inside of the Patreon. We have live stream Q and A's that you can join, content that will never be on YouTube, and you can even get on face to face with me for video calls to discuss laptops, creative work, and just hang out and chat and get to know one another better. So that's where we're doing community. There's a couple different tiers to choose from. So go on, head over right now, you know, or, or when this review is finished and check out the Patreon. We would absolutely love to have you join us there. Now, another thing that makes this laptop stand out as the best of all worlds of the Asus gaming laptops is its thin and light package. This thing is so on the go friendly. It's thinner than the M16, it's lighter, and it just has a more professional aesthetic. To me, I think I could carry this into a business meeting and not think twice that I'm carrying, you know, some kind of chintzy gaming laptop. It's a very nice, clean aesthetic. And with that great battery life, I wouldn't be worried about this laptop going dead during the meeting. Now, in regards to the connectivity, you have a HDMI, your power power adapter, USB type C, and you can even connect the XG Mobile to the X16. Now keep in mind the X16 comes in a 3070 Ti as well as a RTX 3060. So in my opinion, I don't know why you would want to link on a 3080 when you already have a 3070 Ti. So if you get the RTX 3060, it might make more sense. Also, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the RTX 3060 model or the RTX 3070 Ti, I'll put links in the description below and you can check out the live pricing. Also, if you make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Top it all off on the left side panel with a headphone jack. And then let's jump on over to the right side panel. We have a nice large vent here. We have USB type A, USB type A, micro SD card slot. Again, I don't know why they brought that. This is one area where I'm like, okay, if you wanted to make this laptop the best of all worlds, give us a full size SD card slot. 
but it's a micro SD card slot nonetheless. And of course your power button. Now, speaking of that vent, this laptop is surprisingly cool and quiet. We never saw above 82 degrees Celsius for the 4K export, and that was all at 52 decibels of fan noise. Now, 52 decibels of fan noise is not the most impressive. Now, what is impressive is on silent mode, we had a 67 degrees Celsius on the CPU and a 30 decibel from the fans. Quiet, cool laptop. Now, that was not the most amazing export time. It was six minutes and 43 seconds, but as you can see on performance mode, we get a two minute and 58 second export, which is on par with the most popular gaming laptops in use for video editors. Now, the upgrade path on this laptop is definitely something to talk about. You have access to two RAM sticks as opposed to the moving forward in the future bad decision from companies to only give you access to one RAM stick. So we still have two upgradable RAM sticks in this system, which makes for a great upgrade path. So hat off to you, Asus, for doing that. Now let's go ahead and jump into the performance benchmarks, kicking it off in Geekbench single core and multi-core. If you only looked at these results, this would not be the most impressive laptop. I mean, looking at single core and multi-core in Geekbench, it sits near the mid to bottom of the charts against some of the other popular gaming laptops. And even as we move into Cinebench R20 and R23, it just doesn't look like the best performing laptop. And that's why I really don't like relying on these simulated benchmarks to prove out if a laptop is good or not for creators. So let's jump right in to the creator benchmark starting off in Blender. You can see it scores a 787, which is in the top percentile of laptops for creators. So really happy to see almost a 900 out of this laptop. Now moving into Autodesk 3ds Max, we start to see it move up the charts a little bit, scoring a 205 and things get quite impressive as we get into Autodesk Maya, scoring a 280 with the highest laptop on the chart here at a 298. So definitely a top performing laptop with that RTX 3070 Ti. Moving into PTC Creo, again, holding its own near the top of the charts. However, as we jump into SolidWorks, it's not one of the top performers. That is because this is using an NVIDIA gaming GPU. If you're looking for great performance in SolidWorks, I always recommend NVIDIA workstation GPUs like the A2000, A3000, A5000, or AMD Radeon GPUs like the RX 6800S, the RX 6700S, or maybe even the RX 6850MXT. Great GPUs for SolidWorks. They get fantastic performance. All right, moving on into Photoshop. This laptop scores a 1,089, a fantastic score. And the fact that this laptop is a two-in-one laptop makes it a perfect fit for on-the-go graphic designers, digital artists, or photographers. Touch up your photos with a pen, work on your designs, work on your art, and have all the performance you need. You will not experience bottlenecks with this system. Now, let's say you wanna turn that artwork into something that moves in motion and you wanna jump into After Effects, a 907, on the benchmark chart is fantastic. You'll have no issues inside of After Effects. Now, if you wanna improve the experience on either of these programs, Photoshop or After Effects, just go ahead and upgrade the RAM to say 32 gigs of RAM, and then it will have even more performance and you'll have smooth sailing with more RAM. More RAM is definitely something that After Effects and Photoshop appreciate. Now, checking out the Premiere Pro playback, Ooh, I must say, I was impressed with this laptop. This got a 69 for the 6K B-Raw playback out of 16,177 frames. Killer drop frame rate. And then a 219 in red footage, which is just unreal. I mean, especially at the price point of this laptop, I think when I looked at it, it was around the $2,600 price point. That is great, great performance. On average, I'm seeing laptops at this price point or maybe even a little bit lower price point drop anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 frames. And so this only dropped 219 was great. So definitely handles red footage without any issues. And of course, 4K and 6K B-RAW. Now looking at the export time, had great playback. I expected to have really good export times. However, the export times were average in regards to the top performing gaming laptops for video editors. 258 is good, nothing to, to you know write home about, um, but it was still a great export time. A little bit more impressive as we get into the 6K B-RAW export at 15 minutes and 16 seconds, the third place contender here on my charts. Now moving into DaVinci Resolve, man, this thing had smooth playback in DaVinci Resolve, really good. So if you're gonna be a Resolve user, you're not gonna have any issues. And then of course for the export time at six minutes and 23 seconds, 
is good. It's about a minute slower than the fastest time out of the M16. Good export time, gonna serve you well, and I think it'd be a good pick for DaVinci Resolve. Should you buy the X16? If you're a graphic designer, digital artist, or photographer, I mean, this thing has performance, functionality, battery life, and an amazing screen for your work. If you're a video editor working anything from 4K to 6K red footage, this will have what it takes. If you're getting into 3D modeling, everything will be solid except for SolidWorks. Ah. SolidWorks is one area where this laptop does struggle a little bit. So that this laptop is comes in such a thin and light package, it has a lot to offer. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase. Likes this video has brought you some value. And don't forget to check out the Patreon for more exclusive content and community access. I'll see you here on the next video.